I'm fascinated by how you get inside the minds of teenagers, and particularly a teenage girl, a, a group of teenage girls. How does it work? How, how do you put those words into their mouths? What, what was your experience? Well, I, I, uh, I hang around schoolyards behind bushes <laughs> until I'm asked to leave by police or, or uh, concerned parents. That's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my career has taken a... I, I, I always got jobs on shows that were about girls. Lots of what I did was always so girl-centric, so I, I got in tune with it. Mm. Writing a show that has a girl at the center uh, is interesting to me because girls put their feelings out there. They're more exposed. Stories come easier. Um, and the way I can get to writing for a girl is I take a guy, I strip away all the BS and the macho stuff, and, they, I, and, and I got a girl. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, we are all, we all have that, yeah. you know? You've shown some uh, sensitivity in the creation of these characters as well. I mean, there's a, a little pro-social thread going through there. Right. Is that always a, an important element for you? What's most important in developing any series is the truth and be honest and be relatable. Uh, don't write to premise or a gimmick, uh, write to characters and relationships, uh, and, and give the kid audience something that is really relatable uh, and honest. Is there background research, though? I mean, do you look at, do you look at what kids are doing at, the, at this time? Do you go and immerse you know, yourself anywhere? I, I usually will look at what a kid is, what they were 30 years ago, and what they are now and what they'll be 30 years from now, there are certain universal truths uh, about growing up. So you write toward that, you know, and don't necessarily worry about well, what is the current thing, because if you write the current thing, by the time it gets on the air, it isn't current anymore. Yeah. So you write the real human thing and the real relatable thing. Did you bring any of your stand-up to the business that you're in now, your, your, your experience as a stand-up comedian? The, the thing you bring from stand-up um, is timing, you know, is having confidence in, in what the words are. You know, the big mantra from Miley was, listen to what the other person's saying, let me see it on your face, then say your line, mm. you know? hear that laugh, hear that sense of timing. You're moving into something new now. This is, uh, again, the same type of audience you're pitching Life With Boys at. Right. Um, but it's, there are more boys. There are. More boys. Tell um, us a bit about that. The show is something that I've always had in my gut. Um, it's a natural evolution for me from Raven, which was broader, to Hannah, which wasn't quite as broad, but still pretty big, to something that doesn't have a huge hook, mm. um, and that can really go towards smaller stories, big character definition, um, examine both girls and boys on an equal level, you know, uh, be able to finally have a vehicle where a boy is going to be able to say why they drink out of the milk carton. You know, why do they leave their underwear on the floor? You know, these are questions no one knows the answers to. We're going to ask those questions this time. You're considering other demographics all the time while you're putting these uh, programs together. Absolutely. And of course here in the context of MIPCOM, you've got the international audience here and the international sure. buyers. So wh where does that come, uh, wh where do your thoughts about the, the international audience come in? Right. Or, or are you just working with the honesty and hoping that it's going to work wherever well, you, you know, go? The, whether a kid, wherever a kid is from, there, there, are, there are common truths. 
you know, you, you break up, you have fights with your friends, you fall in love, you have uh, your, a friend that is in love with you, but you don't feel that way. Uh, you have fights with your parents. All these things are true for any kid in the world. And so as long as you concentrate on doing that, you will appeal to the international market. The other secret is never to write down to kids, write up to kids. They're so smart. They're getting smarter and smarter and smarter. You know, when I wrote Raven, they were here. Hannah, they're getting smarter. Now, Life with Boys, they're getting smarter. So you've always got to keep up in the bar. Yeah. And are you always thinking TV uh, 26 times 30 minutes now, or are you thinking other platforms at the same time when you're creating uh, these well, masterpieces? The, the industry is moving so rapidly in so many places. Uh, you always think about that. Mm. But if you write something that's real and truthful and that kids are going to relate to, it will fit on these platforms. It will take care of itself. Just don't lose sight of respecting the audience. Mm. Are there any taboo subjects for tweens and teens for your audience? Uh, the dirty. Doing the, the thing. <laughs> uh, it, it, you, you, sex, no sex, I'm sorry, there's, there's not a lot of that going on. Mm. Um, you know, drugs, all things for the next level of programming, there is a certain safety that you still want to protect. You want parents to think well, if I watch Life with Boys, I know it's going to be responsible. I know it's going to be fun. I know if they deal with a the topic, they're going to do it in a very soft way and in a way that I would approve as a parent. What's the business model? Where's the money come from? Where does the who, money come from? Who, in, <laughs> who invests all this money in you and how long is it going to last? Well, the Disney Channel first invested it. And the money there, of course, came from music and merchandising and all those wonderful things. I mean, they do it fantastically. I mean, it comes from people that believe in it. And how far ahead can you look in this process? I mean, you, you know that more, more, more material is coming after Life with Boys. What, what's, when do you see a sort of dead end? A dead end? Yeah. When do you, when do you see yourself having to go out and tout again? <laughs> <laughs> or go back to stand-up? Right. Well, when I say kids today, yeah. when I start saying that, that's when I should leave. Yes. Okay. You know, or, or I just started going, I remember comedy when it was funny. <laughs> then I should stop. 